And welcome back to Garifuna Coalition USA is a not-for-profit organization whose mission is to advocate for the rights of Garifuna immigrants and strengthen civic participation within the community by nurturing local leadership through educational as well as cultural programs that bring community together and members from racial and ethnic lines. We're pleased to be joined now by the chairman of the board of Garifuna Coalition USA Incorporated, Jose Francisco Avila. That was the uh, professional introduction, but friend and brother, good to see you, man. Good to see you also. How's Aaron? everything going? Really good. It's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, but fortunately we're here and I'm glad to be back at live at BronxNet. Yeah, well, I'm glad to have you here too and, and to really talk about the Garifuna community, right? Because That's right. You know, we talk about social justice. We talk about the fact that uh, it affects people in communities of color. Absolutely. And we don't just talk about African Americans. We say there's so many people who fall under that umbrella, and one of those is the Garifuna community. Exactly, Darren. Uh, we are part of that group that now they call the black and brown community, right? <laughs> <laughs> and in the case of the Garifuna, we actually uh, fit both because we are an Afro-indigenous group. And yes, we deal with uh, social justice because we deal with the inequalities. We have dealt with marginalization and exclusion. And why not say it? Discrimination also. Right. Uh, this at, uh, in the countries of origin, such as Belize, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua, and even here. Uh, for, as a matter of fact, the Garifuna community was basically dormant or invisible, even though we have been migrating here since 1932. And it wasn't until March 25th, 1990, that New York discovered that we were here during the Happy Land Social Club fire. Uh, where 87 people perish, and 60 of those were Garifuna. The majority of the victims were Garifuna, and that's how New York discovered those. So as a result, the Happy Land Social, uh, Social Club fire actually became the organizing mechanism mm -hmm. for the Garifuna community, and again, raising awareness. So yeah. When it comes to social justice, yes, we absolutely play a role in that. You know, it has got to be a certain feeling for you because it, it took a tragedy exactly for your community to be recognized. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and, and again, and we at that point we had been here for almost you know over six, 60 years and right. so forth. And that's but then again, taking into consideration what we as minorities, black people, brown people have gone through the years, the fact that our history have been erased, uh, we have been ignored, and again, we have been part of that process uh, that has taken. But that's what we, you see the word advocate mm -hmm. in our mission, because that's basically what we do, is advocate for the Garifuna community. We started raising awareness and bringing it to the attention, again, taking advantage of the situation, the circumstances under which New York recognized us. Uh, we, and we were able to organize and actually fight for social justice, civic engagement. Uh, as a matter of fact, they gave us an opportunity to do that, uh, really, because we, we recognize that it's one thing to be erased, there is a totally different thing not participating right. in the civic process. And we decided that that's, what, that's the approach that we were going to take. We were not going to blame anybody, but we we're going to take the responsibility to include our co community in the social, cultural, political, and economic development of New York City, and specifically the Bronx. When you talk about where you are today, obviously, a long way has come since the city first recognized, we first took the time to recognize um, that there is an existence of the Garifuna community. Um, where are you today when you talk about social justice? Do you feel like your voice is being heard and your presence is being felt? Darren, the way I describe it, our grassroots efforts, raising awareness, have taken our community from obscurity to the pinnacle of recognition. Mm. And I'm talking specifically the Declaration of Garifuna American Heritage Month, and that, that was in 2008 by then borough president Adolfo Carrion. And then in 2009, he continued, uh, uh, Ruben Diaz Jr. continued it. In 2010, uh, then uh, council and assembly member, Michael Benjamin, introduced the, the declaration of March 11 to April the 12th as Garifuna American Heritage Month in the assembly. And then Governor David Patterson 
declare it, signed it. Mm -hmm. And since then, uh, Governor Cuomo has done it. Uh, the current governor, Hoko, did it last year. We're heading to Albany, where we're going to be attending the assembly session and the Senate session and to observe the declaration of March 11 to April the 12th as Garifuna American Heritage Month. So our raising awareness at our advocacy, social justice fight, we feel that we have accomplished a lot. Yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot has happened. And exactly. still, a lot, it's still a lot of work that needs to be done. When yes. you look at, the, at what's going on in the community right now, there is a great majority of people right there who still stand in the need. Exactly. Uh, what are some of the needs that you find within the Garifuna community? Do they parallel to the regular needs of, that you hear African Americans and Latino and Latinx talk about? I'm glad you asked that question and the way you posed it, because, yes, uh, the way you usually answer that question is the issues of the Garifuna co uh, community are the same as any other New York community. The difference being that we didn't have a voice. We didn't have someone speaking. Because we find ourselves in that sort of strange situations that we're black, we're indigenous, and we come mostly from Latin America, so we can be, but we, find us, we used to find ourselves in a situation that we were too black to be Latinos, and we were too Latino to be black. <laughs> <laughs> so where do you fit, right? You know, yeah, exactly. yeah. And that's one when this, we decided to advocate under our own identity, our own voice. Uh, but yes, there are the same issues. And one of the biggest one is immigration. You know, there's a lot of, uh, of our people who n need to, you know, get their documents and, and so forth. Uh, poverty is, is an issue. Housing, of course, inflation, mm -hmm. everything that's going. But again, be previously, we were dealing with that situation without a voice. Now we have, besides the Garifuna Coalition, there are other Garifuna organizations that are, de are dealing with those issues where we emphasize advocacy. Uh, but again, they're, yes, just like you said, they're very, they're parallel, they're very, but now we have a voice. Yeah, uh, unpack a couple of those issues. I'm going to make sure that I tell our viewers, because they, they got a very special celebration happening this month. We're going to get to that, but I want to talk a little bit about a couple of issues sure. that you got going on, right? Talk about immigration for a minute, because after COVID, a lot of people, well, now that we're at the end of it, I want to say towards the end of it, we pray. Um, a lot of people said that when it came to the issue of immigration, things were already bad, but now in this post-COVID environment that it's even worse, particularly for people trying to get their documents. What are you seeing? Absolutely. Absolutely. There are, uh, and I'm, uh, you know, there are people that talk about it. When, it. when it comes to immigration, everyone talks about what's happening right now on the border. And I tell them, you know what, this has been going now for now nine years. This started in 2014 when children were traveling, specifically from the Garifuna communities, to the border. Mm -hmm. and, and then it moved on. Now it has gotten worse because just before the pandemic, 2018, 2019, you have migrants lining up in Honduras, Guatemala, Central America. Now, in addition to them, we got the Haitians, we got you know people from Africa who are traveling all the way from South America, the Venezuelans, and the immigration crisis that we have right now. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's now in the. Uh, we, what I like to emphasize that Garifuna have been part of that process. So when I talk about housing, when I talk on, uh, you know, about undocumented people, when I talk about poverty, it's this, it's this group of people that have arrived. As a matter of fact, one of the things that we've done is actually increase the number of our population. We used to say it was 50, uh, 200,000. Now it says 250,000 mm -hmm. because of the large flow. Of our, uh, of our community. And of course, we do know that that inflow of people, that influx of people, ha impacts all of us. Right. Because, I mean, let's, let's see, let's just look at what the mayor is going through right now, trying to figure out how to provide assistance and balance the needs of, all, you know, the local community and, and so forth. So yes, it has gotten worse. Yeah. And when I think about COVID, I think mm -hmm. about the fact of how individual communities talk about how they were impacted. And, you know, to hear uh, Asian Americans, to hear African Americans, to hear, uh, and we all were, I mean, we all were, Absolutely. but you know, for the purpose of show and talking, mm -hmm. you know, we look at what happened, you know, in our community, we see that the disproportionate amount of people who had morbidity rates. Exactly. What was it like for the Garifuna community? Well, as you know, we all know that the Bronx took the brunt of it. 
uh, when it comes to the Garifuna the community. Most of the male, Garifuna men, work, you know, uh, in housekeeping, construction. Uh, the women work as health aides. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what was the term that they call it? So they were necessary, you know, the, uh, essential workers. Essential workers, exactly. Right. So they couldn't take off. Most of them continue to do. Uh, I was mentioning to you off camera that uh, in 2020, I, I was sitting there and I just decided, you know, let me check. And I went to social media, Facebook specifically. From April 1 to April 30th, I had identified 65 Garifuna people who had perished in the midst of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Today, the number that I see is between 200 and 300 Garifuna people, and most of them right here in the Bronx. Because again, uh, my people are es essential workers, and they were right there. Well, in my case, I was able to commute, and not commute, but work from home. They were not able to do that. So yes, there was quite an impact in the Garifuna community also. Yeah, our essential workers are to be celebrated. Exactly. You know? And uh, to be celebrated, let's talk about that because you, that's what we're here, right? Absolutely. We're talking about part of that too, right? Yes. So you got a, you got you have a special heritage celebration taking place. Absolutely. This is the month. And this is the month. Come on. As a matter of fact, we start uh, as Garifuna American Heritage Month from March 11 to April the 12th, mm -hmm. and actually, it's a celebration and a commemoration. Why March 11 to April the 12th is commemorating the forcible deportation of our ancestors from the island of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, where we hail from. Mm -hmm. In 1797, specifically March 11, 1797, 2,248 of our ancestors were loaded by the bridge onto 10 ships and sent on a journey through the Caribbean Ocean with no idea where they were going to. The ships arrived in Rotan, Honduras on April 12, 1797. 222 of our ancestors perished in that journey. So 2026 landed and we spread through Belize, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua, which is where the Garifuna diaspora is now. So that's the commemoration. What we celebrate is the fact that after 216 years, we're still here. 226 years, we're still here. And uh, I summarize it by saying, so not only did we survive, we had thrived. Mm -hmm. We're celebrating an even American Heritage Month in the capital of the world, in the Empire State. Uh, it, it, will be declared, it has been declared, started in the, in the Bronx since 2008. Uh, so April, we're going to the city council on April the 12th, for a different day. And April the 13th, we're going to be at Gracie Mansion, celebrating with the mayor. How often do you find yourself in a position where you say, I got to give education as to who the Garifuna community is? Uh, how often? Because I, you say the word Garifuna and people look at you like... Exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. On a daily basis. <laughs> 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 I, just had a, I, I just had an interview last night with one of, you know, uh, yesterday with a, a, media, a large media company. And every time I do that, it's the same thing. But guess what? It's my favorite subject, mm -hmm. so I love love educating people. And my greatest satisfaction is because of the, uh, I mean, raising awareness about our community and everything that we've done. Although there's still people who don't know us, there's a whole lot more. Mm -hmm. uh, we're getting recognition. We're, you know, uh, people uh, from different media are approaching us. Different agencies, uh, you know, like local hospitals, uh, for instance, as as a result of the uh, Garifuna American Heritage Month. We were gave, able to get sponsorship to basically finance these act this activities from organizations that had never really, you know, participated mm -hmm. in any Garifuna activities. And now they want to know a lot more. And not only do they want to know a lot more, there is because they also want to be able to provide the resources that, that, the, that the community needs. Right. So we're excited about that. Yeah, I, I think about the fact that there's so many things that people don't know when it comes to the community. Matter of fact, let's be honest. I mean, I, we've been doing this for a minute, right? right. So <laughs> when you say to people, well, you know, most of our, most of our, uh, you know, our history stemmed from Happy Land, mm -hmm. you have to know, there are a lot of people right now who are watching who don't even know what Happy Land is. Uh, thank you. You know? Exactly. And so it becomes a whole nother education uh, process right, right. whatsoever. Do you ever get tired of, of, of really just telling the story and educating and bringing awareness? No. No, uh, yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad you, you brought it up. Uh, 
I enjoy it so much doing it that just recently I decided to submit a proposal because the Historic District Council holds a competition at the end of the mm -hmm. year where organizations and actors are invited to submit proposals. And I submitted a proposal uh, based on the Happy Land Memorial and what happened there. So I draft two weeks ago, we were informed that we're going to be six, the competition is called Six to Celebrate. So based on the submissions, they choose six organizations to celebrate. The Garifuna Coalition is one of them for 2023. Wow. And again, our submission was based around the Happy Land uh, Memorial. Mm -hmm. And what was interesting was I had to, you know, document it. And I went to to the memorial, but every time I have been there, then I always just focus on the memorial. This time, I decided to walk the area, the neighborhood, and I realized that there's like 10 or 15 historic sites for the Garifuna community around in that neighborhood. So I was able to describe that, and I, of course, we did such a, uh, such a good job that we were, have been selected as the uh, one of the six that will be celebrated is going to be on March 30th. They haven't told us exactly when, but as soon as we do, I will let you know. Yeah, you gotta let me know so we Absolutely. can make sure to try to get a camera crew out there and take some uh, take some video, yeah. bring back and show the people of uh, New, New York City, the Bronx, New York City, exactly uh, who the Garrett Funeral Community Thank is. Thank you. Continue the education. You gotta continue the education. And uh, what is, uh, before we wrap, I wanna ask about misconceptions, because there's always stereotypes. There's always mm -hmm. misconceptions. Sure. Uh, What's, what comes to the top of the list when it comes to the Garifuna community as to misconceptions and stereotypes? The biggest misconception about the Garifuna community is the fact that it's on the verge of extinction. However, I contradict that by saying that uh, today uh, New York City is home to the largest Garifuna community outside of Central America with 250,000. Mm -hmm. The Bronx, where we are located right now, I call the biggest Garifuna village because half of that population lives here. But the biggest misconception is the extinction. And as a matter of fact, uh, specifically, they always talk about the language. But guess what? The language, music and dance were, the, were proclaimed masterpieces of the oral and intangible heritage of humanity by UNESCO in 2001. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Yes, but that's the, that's the biggest one, and we're still here. And I, I, I like to say now, we didn't just survive, we continue to thrive. That's it, that's it. Jose Francisco Avila, I'm gonna tell people what I told you, uh, what I told you off camera, said on camera. You have been one of the greatest ambassadors for the Garifuna community for the longest time, and the Garifuna community owes you a great debt of gratitude for how you've been on the battlefield to bring awareness and to make us even more aware of all the things that go on. So it's a pleasure and an honor to have you. Same and to be here. sitting here. Thank you. You know, to be sitting here because, yeah. uh, as we said, we haven't been doing this for years, but glad to have you here. Thank you, Darren. All righty. Well, we want to take a quick break. Got more. We want to thank, uh, we want to thank, I should say, Jose Francisco Avila, who is the chairman of the board of the Garrett Kafuna Coalition USA uh, with the large representation in the Bronx and across New York City. Take a quick break. Be right back after this.